tuning in to the online broadcast network, AfterBuzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menounos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Yeah. Woo! Yes! Yeah. It's going down! Welcome, After Buzzers. Yeah. If you uh, can't tell, this is obviously not Thaddeus next to me. I'm your host, Christina Kaplan. We are joined by a very, very special guest, three-time All-Pro linebacker, Lavar Arrington. <laughs> Thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate you guys having me here. This is. This is so I'm, doing, I'm doing your initials, L-L-A. 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 Thank you, thank you. Forgive me. <laughs> so exciting. Oh, fail, Kevin. That was a fail. Kevin that was a Okay, fire. and still aside from... I've been from, waiting to get on this show. Yes, so aside from it. LeVar, I have... I'm Kevin John. Hey, guys, and I'm Steph Z. Yes. So, like I said, very special guest. LeVar here works on NFL AM, the best uh-huh. morning show in all of television, it's not just sports like a big television. Deal. It uh, is a big deal. Yes, because of the hours. Yes. <laughs> we work while people sleep. Yes. Nice. So, so, so if they're asleep, then they can't be watching us. So <laughs> wake your tails up so you can see us work. I, what, so what t- on average, what time are you up in the morning to do that? Uh, and then we get there by a little, and then we do the show at 3 a.m. So basically, wow. he said they get up at 12.33 a.m. They're in the studio by 1.35 a.m. And they close. do the show by 3. Did yeah, I get, that is kind of close. close. Did I translate that yeah, that's close. correctly? Yeah, that's close. Okay. If you guys start giving wake-up calls, I'll get up to watch. <laughs> you should. I will. It's very entertaining. If you, have your Twitter, yeah. if you have your Twitter notification or Instagram, at LeVar Arrington. Yeah, he's big on Instagram now. Oh. oh. I'm like a big deal on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, Insta famous. What, what, was the, yeah. what was the last thing you posted on Instagram? Uh, that he was excited to do the show with us? Duh. The, yeah, the picture. That, is that what it is? Yes. Yeah. Yes, that is. <laughs> he's is lying. Really? Let's, let's, go, let's go check and see. No. <laughs> no. What is the last big thing one of you guys posted on Instagram? The last big thing? Yes. Me? Yes, big piece of news. Me, a picture Ooh. with me and Stuart Scott, and That's I posted that cool. last Sunday morning. You know, I worked with Stuart Scott on Dream Job on ESPN. <gasps> oh, I remember that. I did. That was like reality TV on ESPN. I was one of the judges, so I was lucky enough to work with one of the great ones in the business. Amen. And shots out to Stu. Yep. Yeah. Booyah. Mm-hmm. Booyah. Yeah. Yeah. I'm about to say, me and my slain. I was trying to do Stuart oh, Scott sayings again. all last uh, weekend. He just wasn't delivering on my <laughs> Stuart was one. Failing so. I appreciate the yeah. thought and we appreciate the love, but you just, it didn't work. Well, I tried. That's Stu all I'm It's the thought that counts. Exactly. It's, the, it's the motivation. You're exactly. right. Amen. Yeah. Correct. There it is. Amen. Yeah. I mean, the last big thing that I posted on Instagram was just a selfie. So. I know that's right. But you I, do, I you saw it. But you have great selfies, like, though. They might she, be I, I have to agree. Tina posts some really great selfies. That's like your name they, around here, Tina? Well, because my Instagram... Our systems detect that a host has wandered off the subject. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh. Hey, no. LeVar actually brought up that subject, so nice. no fill. Nice. Get him back. Yeah, on. but he's Anyways. not an official host. All right. All get right. him on the rails. Fine. Let's let's get back on the rails oh. then. Lavar, tell us a little yes. bit about of your company that you're working with that you created, XP. Yeah. Extreme Pre- I, well, Precision. Precision. I, I appreciate you asking. It's it's a it's a technology company, and and what it is is we took all the aiming points of what you do on the football field, and we we put them on shirts and shields and different products to teach the fundamentals of the game and it's it's gone really well we work very closely with under armor we we just finished up doing the under armor all american week and uh, we integrated the the jersey and the sticks and the shields and the sleeves into the the practice week and it's gone going really well Awesome. Thanks so, for asking. What you said you you you, you know kind of take things so off. So I could so teach what you exactly? how to be a bad mamma jamma like 
on your everyday life, even if it's not on the football field, you still know where to put your hands if you need to use them. But that's good because I my I never know where to put my hands well, throughout go. the day. So you that's got, that's good to know. You gotta see your work and know where your hands are going when you use them. You dig? That, that, no, that's interesting. That, All right. How, how did this super idea? Interesting. How how did the conception of this idea come? Uh, it was just slow and pure genius at work and. <laughs> Like the Israel. magic, the magic <laughs> happened, and, and, and before you knew it, yeah, it just one thing led to another, and and then boom, there was a creation. No, no, the true story was I was mentoring one one of my young guys, and he did poorly at the NFL Combine, mm. and I packed up my bags and went to to teach him, and and train him for his pro day to see if he could kind of uh, salvage what what he had lost and and you know ground at, at the combine and in a last ditch effort to actually try to teach him some of the things that I needed him to learn uh, I drew it on a shirt and and he picked up what I was teaching him and then I just kind of sat there one day and really felt like maybe there's a possibility that I could do this for for every position so I went on like a seven month pilgrimage and interviewed some of the greatest coaches that have ever played uh, coached some of the greatest players that have ever played the game and then took like another six months to to take and extract all the the consistencies of the information and came up with aiming points that were connected to the things that were were discussed during those interviews and we we tested it and vetted it out for about three years and no one was able to punch a hole in in the aiming points so now it's just been a matter of gaining uh, gaining exposure uh, to to bring it eventually to to market. Mm -hmm. uh, wow! Yeah, so that's kind of it's quite comprehensive, but that's yeah. the serious story behind it. I usually joke around, but it's no joking matter when you're talking about XP. Yeah, you know it's that's a, why that's I got the, a big deal. That's serious that's, business. That's why I got this visor on right now because it's about. So what's an XP. example of what a shirt would say? Just give us an example of one of the shirts, well, like something it would say or be It wouldn't say, but or, there'd be a marking point right there, right? Uh-huh. And so if I'm teaching you how to get a hold of a guy, there's the the, part, the place where you're supposed to grab him, and it'd be a target right there. That's an example for you. Or say if I'm teaching you how to jam. Well, I didn't hit you that hard. You, you can't. <laughs> I'm a light dude. Don't I'm, be, I'm, I'm like on, a... man. Don't be flimsy. Right there. I'm no crash test dummy. That's for sure. Right okay. there. You're saying flimsy. Right. Yeah, yeah. I'm messing with hey, it. I play football, I so I, I had some... to endure a lot of those hits. Let me tell you something. That you, you got a, a sprinter's body. You, you <laughs> could have made it in the game. I know you were pretty good when you played, probably. I'm telling you, like man. Like a receiver. Three, I was a hell of a backup kicker for my team. I'm telling you, man. I was, man. I was the truth. That that was that was reserve duty when you weren't making touchdowns and different things. Aren't you going to get us back on the rails, man? Aren't you supposed I was, to? Detect I was listening it? to you yeah. talk about what, your company. Was it interesting? I like it. You yeah. liked it? Yeah. yeah. XP. Yeah. yeah. You it's never good. actually explained it to me. Yeah. It's so. it's it's really the future of where football is going with all of the head injuries and the different uh, concerns surrounding the game. The the drop off in participation uh it's it's a really really great teaching tool and and it, it facilitates uh teaching it the right way and these these guys from the pros on down to to six-year-olds actually are able to be taught the same exact way and correct themselves the same exact way because the football fundamentals uh, are pretty pretty consistent they they really don't change which makes it a pretty cool thing because it you can actually turn the game into what it's supposed to be which is a scientifically played played sport mm -hmm. but people don't know that it, it has a lot of science involved with it well, unless and they watch John Brinkus. Well, and there you go. Understand. Some sports science. There you go. Yeah. All right. Since you mentioned getting back on the rails, obviously yes. very cool company aiming to really just better football overall for everyone. Get kid, kid, kids back into the sport that, you know, has been loved for so many years. But, you why know, it's awesome think, when you – oh, sorry. Go ahead. Why do you think kids – do you think that because of the injuries and because of the stuff that's happening, that's why parents are so hesitant to get kids in? So do you think something like this will – like there's this whole stigma. Like the mm -hmm. game's been the game. Mm -hmm. Like why are there yeah. so many more injuries now? Well, I mean, like it's the not that there's so many more injuries. It's just so much more exposure to the injuries. There's right. there's more knowledge surrounding yeah. the injuries at this point. 
and you know they say it's an interesting stat out there uh, a survey was done and they said 66 percent of graduate couples don't allow their children to participate and tackle football right is it a stigma sure it's a stigma but it's also a reality and a truth that's associated with the game you don't want to have kids out there playing and not understand what the game is about you don't want to have guys out there coaching your children and they don't understand what the game is about so what we do is basically bridge the gap between a coach and a player but we're also making it simple enough where you don't have to know a hundred percent of what every x and o is about or or what what different strategies or even what different penalties are when you're talking about entry level coaches that generally are parents that are are you know donating mm-hmm. their time for their children so you make it simple enough for them to understand how to teach those those simple fundamentals at the at the youngest ages and then now you're putting in the the proper foundation for them to be able to grow into uh, a productive but also a much more safe uh, football player they're they're able to protect themselves but they're also in essence protecting the people that they're playing against because they understand where to put their eyes where to put their hands how to make tackles instead of closing their eyes dropping their heads or doing things that are, are a lot of times we see in the pros it's it's not taught correctly so it's right. just a matter of teaching the game the right way and from the start. Do you think it will ever be something that's incorporated into like jerseys for kids and yeah. stuff? Like yeah, it's that's what it is. That, that's what it is. It's on the actual jerseys. Like yes. where to hit. Oh, okay. Now, do you guys actually. I know you want to ask a million questions. I, I hate do. to I'm cut so, you off, I'm but we so really, so really need to get into uh, our. Good job. Good job. Way, way to take charge. Yeah, yeah. Take in charge. Oh, so let's talk about this is the really first, interesting, though. No, the first awesome. playoff game that we had this weekend, which was the Patriots. That boy Brady. Ravens. That boy Brady boy. Oh, he's one of the guys. Yeah. That the Brady Butch. <laughs> he's a Sorry, go ahead, ball. Tina. Um, yeah, no. Tom Brady, obviously, amazing football that boy. player. But Cry baby. The Ravens had that game. The Ravens had that game. The Ravens they had were that in game it. and Tom Brady's cry baby. Um <laughs> I'll put it like... Uh, well, okay, the Patriots from a are true the, Jets fan. Yeah, exactly. Not even that. Like, he just cries to the refs after he gets double sack, like, sack after sack. Like, come on, man. No, no I, I agree with you. Of all the quarterbacks in the NF, oh, NFL, he, I do believe Brady... the refs more than anyone. ...does have a skirt on. And sometimes oh. he needs to take that skirt off and just play the the, the game of football on the gridiron the way he's it should very, be played. He's very of, passionate. Of all of the quarterbacks in the NFL, he's probably the best in the NFL. You, you're saying he's number one in the NFL right now? That's a bold the, statement. The dude is a winner. T- name me a better winner in, in the NFL than Tom Brady. Uh, another guy that'll be in the NFC Championship game, Aaron Rodgers. Like I said, name me another winner in the NFL that's better than Tom Brady. Russell Wilson. Again, I ask. <laughs> name me another winner in the NFL. So here's the thing, right? When you look at Tom Brady and you look at what he's been able to accomplish through the years, a lot of people focus in on – on his shortcomings and in times that he has come up short in terms of winning winning it all but he's always there he's he's always competitive if you had Tom Brady on your team you would love the fact that you had Tom Brady on your team and and that's what you measure a guy by is if you hate him mm-hmm. because of your team and you love him because he's on your team that's the true measure and he's he's brought what three super bowls to to New England, I mean, he's he is him and Bill Belichick are the constants of a team that continues to win games year in and year out. That's a Phil Jackson and Michael Jordan duo there. It's it's, it's difficult, even if and and you could say that Michael J- uh, Mike Jordan was a crybaby or a sore loser or a lot of the things that uh, adjectives you use. Not to Brady's level, maybe. I don't know, bro. But you it, might, you but, might. I mean, you, it, it, Michael Jordan was a complainer. It, it, he complained almost every single time he got touched no. when he was on the court. Chris Webber was a whiner on the court. But anyways, yeah, but Chris let's Weber go. Is Chris Webber didn't winner. get. Yeah, right. I know. Yeah. Like, that's results. a horrible analogy. Right. Right. Well, he what didn't a, get results. You whatever. Maybe say Kobe. Kobe is yeah, similar. Kobe cries. Kobe yeah. complains. Kobe is a LeBron winner. LeBron was a crier a earlier yes. in his career. He used to cry about LeBron everything. LeBron isn't yeah. enough of a winner yeah. yet. Okay. Exactly. But anyways, no, you brought up something very good, and I know we're going to get into it later, Peyton Manning, because you were talking about how you know, because that's obviously the comparison that's always made right now is Manning and Brady 
And, you know, Brady, I mean, Manning has obviously gotten a stigma for losing in some of the big games. And we all know Brady, the last two times he's been to the Super Bowl, he yes. has lost. Yes. Granted, to, uh, ironically, to Peyton's younger brother. Yep. And, you know, it's like, you know, a lot of times they overlook that when they look at uh, Brady's legacy. But yet Manning is going to get a lot of flack for losing a big game. And I think that sometimes it is an unfair comparison when you compare the two and you talk about Brady's pro season success when Manning has had a lot of pro season success as well. He's lost a lot of games, but he still had quite a lot of postseason success. It's not even close. It's not yeah. even in the same stratosphere as Tom Brady, I bro. Agree. He, 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 how many championships does Peyton Manning have? He, he's won one Super Bowl. How many? He's does, been the three. How many does Doesn't Tom matter have? If he's Brady been has been the three. five. Yeah. Brady's been the five and he's won three. Exactly. That's, so you have no argument there. No, no, no. It's, my, my, it's, it's difficult. It's difficult to make the argument in the sense that when you're when you're judging based off of the success in the postseason. Exactly. I'll get that it's, to Brady. It's, it's very difficult to make that argument. Now, when you have the discussion, and I said this today, when you have the discussion of personal accomplishments and achievements, because I ultimately believe it's a team game. It's the ultimate team sport. So if you win in the playoffs, when you win, you win as a team. You lose as a team as well. Those guys don't play defense. They don't play special teams. So... You have to understand that there's other elements that can exactly. be a part of losing those games. Now, with that being said, is is that element, is that that presence that comes from that player, is that is that a driving force for a team to achieve at a higher level? And I would say you you wholeheartedly believe that about Tom Brady that he's the heart and soul. No matter who has been there, if it if it was Willie McGinnis and and those guys and Teddy Bruschi and and Troy and, Brown, and all those guys, <laughs> right? David Patton and and Givens and and Falk, there was always that one that one constant, and and that was a Tom Brady, mm -hmm. and and so you I I would say you can put Peyton Manning in the discussion of greatest quarterbacks of all mm -hmm. time, but unfortunately. Because he's not one of the greatest winners of all time, he'll he'll never be able to eclipse uh, a, a a Joe Montana. He'll never and and who knows what what's still to be written for Tom Brady because Tom Brady is the modern day Joe Montana, even though he's lost two Super Bowls. I agree. Now, can we agree on one thing? Peyton Manning is the best regular season quarterback of all time. I, I, again, I, I think that you can look at. You can, I mean, the numbers don't lie. You can look at his his individual accomplishments. I mean, he's won the 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 MVP of the the league quite a Five bit of time. <laughs> yeah. So he's he's done amazing things. There's nothing to take away from what Peyton Manning has been able to accomplish as a player in the league. But I think you get into. You know, I look at Jim Kelly. Jim Kelly accomplished some amazing things in the league as as a quarterback. But and, lost every Super Bowl he been to. But who goes to the Super Bowl four years in a row? That's an amazing feat in itself. Then you look at someone like Dan Marino who made it to one Super Bowl and he eclipsed a lot of records as well. And we know how his career ended. Look at Drew Brees. You can name a lot of guys that will go down in the history as some really, really phenomenal quarterbacks. Even Brett Favre. How many Super Bowls does he have? One. Yeah, one. So He has three consecutive MVPs, though. So once, once you get into trying to weigh out individual stats and awards and records versus winning, it, there's there's such a gray area in, in how you're able to, to really kind of put things in their proper place and their their proper perspective. So I think it comes down to you don't remember stats. People don't remember stats. Exactly. We've had that conversation multiple times on yeah, the show yeah. about I know you like to bring up the all the stats, but it's like we've said, it really all comes down to winning. Mm -hmm. what that's what, done that's what in, people on remember. The also, stage. it's a gracious winner. That's what I'm talking about. Like, I do not disagree that Tom Brady is an amazing quarterback, one of the best, if not. Like, but all I'm saying is, to me, it's it's painful almost to watch somebody that 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 good whine about it. Why? You see it as whining. Yeah. Why? Because it's like you're winning. It, it's just like an ungracious. Mm -hmm. It's unsportsmanlike He's a to me. Competitor. Name me a gracious winner. Like what's that? What's that look like? 
Name me, tell me the greatest winners of all time, and I'll tell you how gracious they are. Tell me the greatest winners of all time. The greatest winners. Your guy was not gracious if, if by definition, Which what one? you're looking for. Really? Your guy who, who went off the field and said we were going to win this thing, and then they beat the Baltimore Colts. He wasn't a gracious right. guy. Look, know your yeah. history now. You're wearing yeah. the shirt there. N- yeah. Namath. Yeah, 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 Mr. Willie Joe was not, if, if by the, the means uh, or definition of what that may be, the greatest winners of all time were, were not people that were okay with losing. And sometimes, sometimes not, you can like the way somebody interviews, you can like the way they come across as a person, and that's, that's cool and all, but the reality of it is, is fierce competitors, there's something different about every last one of them. And, and gracious and, and docile and uh, meek and, and humble, those things can play a part of it, but they have their proper places. Have you ever met Tom Brady? Tom Brady is a personal friend of mine. He's a pretty cool guy I'm off the field. He's an amazing guy off so, the field. So the thing about it is when you see the competitor, whatever it is that, that you see that makes it work for him because it obviously works for him, what, when you see that on the field, it's it's a different it's a different feel than what that person may be. They're in character. You look at somebody like Floyd Mayweather, he, may, he will go down as one of the greatest fighters in the history of boxing. Now, people may question his, who he fought and different things like that. Bottom line is he's still unbeaten, and he goes out there. He talks the talk, but he also walks the walk. So when you're one of those type of guys and you compete at that high of a level, it's really difficult to sit there and, and, and kind of – it's it's good for entertainment. It's great for discussion, but to try to pick apart – winners of of that caliber it's just that's what it is it's just nitpicking so to speak and not see, not attacking I, you or anything but just it's kind of what it is no no i say that's a good I point that, it, it is but i mean as an overall blanket i think that a lot of people that have a lot that root for a lot of different teams would have that same opinion of tom brady see i don't Maybe see so. it as so whining I, I see it as he's extremely passionate because I've been in that situation before where you want like you can't believe that the ref just called that call and you're like no like come on you know it's it's passion it's that he wanted wants to win it's the so emotions bad. of the game yeah I, I don't see it that. as whining but 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 I, I also think though sometimes that you bring up a good point like if you see someone else is getting emotional in the game like Des Bryant or something like that some, sometimes people want to criticize Des Bryant or, or T.O. they used to love to take out T.O. and he was a very passionate emotional um, uh, player but you know you don't see a lot of times people negatively scrutinize maybe you know Tom Brady or it just depends it depends on what it is yeah and when you're when you're a winner when you've won then okay okay there's Spygate and then okay they haven't won since Spygate so you find a way to legitimize or minimize mm-hmm. what he was able to do but then now you look at him off the field like look at who he's married to look at look at the life that he lives a lot of times people base their feelings and their emotions off of people when they look at the life that they're living, it's not just based upon how they play the game. It's based upon looking at someone and, and feeling as though they have it all. Like it, you shouldn't, you shouldn't, you shouldn't look at things this way because you have it all, or you shouldn't complain or whine or be and moan because you have it all. So why are you playing this way, or why do you act that way? But in reality, first of all, I was married to Giselle B- Bougie Dunn. Yeah. I would, I wouldn't cry or whine a day of my life. Well, I don't think he's concerned <laughs> with anybody. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's the thing, Giselle. If you're watching, we I apologize. Don't have to tell that by his haircut a couple years ago. <laughs> I, I think, I'm sorry. Go I think I do a whole lot of crying and moaning, and well, that's it's a family show. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, I saw where you were going. I saw where you were going. It's actually it's not. not. Kevin not. makes oh. plenty of sexual awkward oh, okay. references every was, single I, show. I mean, you brought up GB. I just, you know, I'm going to just say GB because I know how to pronounce it. But, Boy, you know. Shin. All right. So we, we spent Boy, plenty yes. of time talking about Tom Brady. Now let's talk about the Ravens. Do we think he's going to win the Super Bowl? That, that's a good question. Well, we could talk about that in predictions. Okay. Because we, we've got a lot of teams to get to here, and we've barely crossed one. All right, but the game real quick. Right? So, Ravens, yeah. I, I thought, I mean, the Ravens had that game. They put up a tremendous fight. Their defense played really well. I think it was just crucial 
interceptions piv- like at pivotal times in the game. That last interception that Flacco threw mm. kind of sealed the game. He shouldn't have thrown that ball. No, it, I agree. It was Ill advised. Like, yeah. It was a like way deep, deep ball, and was there two? There were two the guys. Safety double was coverage, nearby. Right? Yeah, the, the, he was going for the home run. He he went for the same play that Tom Brady right. actually hit them with the the drive before, but he shouldn't have thrown that. The the safety was was too close in proximity for him to try to deliver that throw. So, it it you live the fight another down. It there was still time, there was still the the options of of doing different things during that drive and I just think that he felt like he could go after and get it Uh, they made plays during the game they left some on the table but they did make plays during the course of the game and maybe he felt as though putting it up there that his guy would be able to go up and make a play on the ball it just didn't work out that way yeah no um (laughs) And so, they, he's played awesome in the, in the playoffs. Yeah, and that, yeah, that's what I was going to say. You know, speaking of quarterbacks, I think Joe Flacco is also, and you brought up that point about a week ago, that he's one of the most underrated yeah. QBs. You know, his postseason record speaks for itself. Yeah, I think he's the you most know. winningest postseason. Ex- yeah. Exactly. Percentage wise. Percentage right wise. He's yeah. the most. Because I think he, Tom Brady is the most winningest uh, playoff he, quarterback right now. If my he, yeah. statistical sense serves me correctly. No, yeah, I, I think you're right. But I think the other. Um, Thing that really kept the Ravens in the game, and they could have won. They had their gra- their run game was a lot stronger than the Patriots. Justin Forsett had 24 carries for 129 yards, so they were able to move the ball a lot more. Um, and still, he still connected with a lot of his receivers as well. Um, Steve Smith Senior only had three receptions for 44 yards and a touchdown, which considering is pretty low for him um but didn't he that's another emotional player but i love his passion or something in the middle of the game it looked he like was he hurt his while. calf or, or something to that mm-hmm. that effect but the, the thing about that is he was going against one of the premier corners in the game in Darrell Revis. right but Revis so, only had one tackle that entire game but but sometimes stats don't tell yeah. the story of a player like a Darrell right. either presence it's there their right, coverage right, right. their you know you also him. know that right no no i agree i just was surprised when i saw that i was like really he only had one tackle that whole yeah. game he got yeah. beat but and like again, they weren't scared to to challenge that matchup with him you, mm-hmm. but you look at steve smith's stats what what was his stat line again he had uh three receptions 44 yards and a, one touchdown that's your stat line for darrell revis right three receptions yeah. 44 yards now one touchdown he gave up that touchdown too but yeah three receptions 44 yards yeah that's that's his stat line, not mm-hmm. not one tackle. It's because he's he defending down, him. Yeah. He shut down their main target in exactly. the passing game. Right. And sometimes that's and, just because he's there covering them. Yeah, and exactly. They decide to do something different. You know, well, but you you know speaking of, speaking of stat lines, one of the one of the stat lines that I think is was the most just jumped out to me the most that was the most flabbergasted was you, uh, the Patriots only ran for 14 yards I believe the the, the whole game yeah they're, something very it, it was meant uh, yeah 14 yards and I, of anything that just kind of goes to I guess support the dominance of Brady is the fact that you know with it's easier to control and we say it a lot of times with teams that run deep in the playoffs you got to have a consistent run game mm-hmm. and a strong run game because that opens up a lot more options offensively and the fact that they couldn't even get I, I don't even think the second half they um did a they may have attempted one or two rushes in the second half even that I don't know the exact stat but if he carried them pretty much offensively all by himself and I'm like you know that's that says a lot when you can pretty much single-handedly win a game through a pass game and you can't you know because you gotta realize when you're rushing the ball a lot you're tiring down the defense you're you know the, the time of your time of possession is going up and um you're giving your defense time to rest to rest exactly uh, yeah there's a lot of things that go into being able to have time of possession and ball control yeah over over the team yeah, absolutely Mm-hmm. Absolutely, and they, they, I mean, I, they got it done with 14 rushing yards. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Right, I mean, Brady threw for 367 yards. So. Exactly, yeah. He's, Outrageous. Uh, he's also now like the all-time leader in postseason touchdowns, I think, with 46. Yeah, so yeah. I, like I think you're right. So, And you know what he does have, I'll give him? This is my favorite Brady play. It's QB sneak. He, he does scored, it yeah. so well. And yeah. he certainly can't run. He's not yeah. super athletic that way. So his 40 is yeah. like a 6'2". <laughs> <It's something, laughs> even that. Not his <laughs> a 7. Yeah. 
Yeah. All right, so let's move on to the next game. Seattle, Carolina. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure everyone kind of thought... Did anyone anyway, think Carolina was going to win this one? Uh, people were, were thinking that... That would be a better game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think that was it. Is everyone thought that the Panthers would put up more of a fight. It um, kind of... It, it was good in the beginning, but then... This is what seems to always happen with the Seahawks is once they get a hold of the game, they just run with Momentum. it. Momentum. Mm-hmm. Um, Especially at home. Right, exactly. So And Beast Mode didn't even really get going going. Right. You know, no, he, he, this he, is uh where did I wrote he, this down? He, it was his first playoff start without a rushing touchdown. Yeah. So yeah. um and he's kind of the heart and soul of that offense. Right. And going into this game coming up this weekend <laughs> against the Packers. The Seahawks are 23 and 2 at home since 2012. They have won eight straight home playoff games, the longest active streak in the NFL right now. Um, so I don't know. Tell That's me a if hard you guys stadium to win. Uh, I I don't know why, but I feel like this team, if it weren't for their home advantage, I don't think that they would be making it this far. Do you guys agree with me, or do you think I'm crazy? Well, they have to build that. You have to build that home field advantage, and and by having the twelfth the way that they do, it's been that's been a process. I mean, you create an intimidation factor when you whoop people's tails when they come to your building. So, yeah. it, Green Bay hasn't lost at home this mm-hmm. year as well. So Lambo, it, it, you build over time. You build a reputation that's associated with your field if if you're they say you got to win at home but the thing about the thing about seattle and you look at what they're able to do the way they built that stadium i played there in a playoff game and when i tell you it is the loudest thing you've ever heard it's it's so loud When, when they say deafening loud it you cannot you can't hear yourself think it's so loud in there, and and so you have to give those fans credit, yeah. and and the architects who built the the stadium the way oh, the that infrastructure they did, yeah, yeah. It, the the fans sit over top of you. It's not like it's Paul Allen. <laughs> it's it's not like Dallas's stadium where it's just so big and it's grand and it can get loud, but it's not on top of you. Yeah, there's you know I've played in a few stadiums and I played in Madison. What was the loudest stadium West you ever played Con- in? Wisconsin was pretty. Seattle's the loudest, man. But Wisconsin, Wisconsin doesn't have this type of, of numbers that a, a big house has going to play in Michigan. But you go play in Michigan, and it's over 100,000 people, and it's loud, but it's not on top of you. Right. When you're playing in a, a stadium where that noise is over top of you, it's a different type of noise. And it does start, it starts to play on you a little bit. How loud is Penn State? It's pretty loud, but it's a very big stadium. It's an open yeah. stadium, so the 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 noise, the the sound travels Somewhere differently. Oh, it I see. It travels differently. Yeah. Right? Whereas if you have a stadium that's that's built a certain type of way, and the fans are over top of you, that that noise is it like you you create like a cross a crosswinds of. It's just it's it's amazing how the noise sits in the stadium the way that it does mm-hmm. so much so they they've had times where they've talked about piping in noise and different things like that because of how loud it gets in the stadium well, you know, it created a mini earthquake in one of the playoff yes, games last did. year yeah. Yeah. because it was so loud yeah. i mean that right there goes, can i mean that paints the whole picture yeah. for you i think and, and it was funny carolina preparing for this game they actually um they use i guess these amplified speakers mm-hmm. and yeah, that's standard they, that's yeah, standard yeah. oh okay because yeah, they kept talking about how carolina they, but they i guess i guess they went over and above and got like you know these thirty-two thousand watt Maybe. just just insane stuff Boom. and apparently i mean it's i guess it's hard to kind of create or simulate that kind of environment um, because it's a different situation when you're actually there. True. But it's like, how can you prepare? How can you, as a football player, prepare to play in a stadium that loud if you can't really I simulate guess, the sound? I guess people haven't cracked that code yet. <laughs> I, I know, right? You said XP. twenty-two and three or whatever. Yeah. XP. That's the XP. Next, next on the list. That needs to be on a shirt. You know how to crack Ooh, the yeah. code. Crack you know. the code. <laughs> crack the co- hashtag. Crack the code. I like yeah. it. I'm gonna use that. <laughs> All right. Now the game that everyone's been talking about mm. because of the controversy, which we had the controversy last week too, Dallas-Green Bay. Mm. 
And we talked about this all four hours on the show this morning. They, he did, not me. <laughs> but um, T- Des Bryant's reversed catch, no catch. Um, we had Dean Blandino, the vice president of officiating on, who explained it. And the way that he explained it kind of made more sense to me as to, like, I, I understood the rule a little bit more, was that Des was, his momentum falling was what propelled him, and then he hit the ground, ground, knocked the ball out. If he would have made what they keep calling a football move, where he would have taken steps forward, mm-hmm. it, that's different. But here's the problem. The problem is you have to take a look at today's athlete and understand that Des Bryant caught that ball. He switched the ball. To the left hand, yeah. While he's hitting the ground and gets two and a half steps, we'll say, before he tries to launch himself across the goal line and reach out and hit the ball off of the ground, it's difficult to not justify that being a catch, a football move, and down, at least down by contact. No, I 100% agree with you. I'm just telling you what no, he and, and said by to the rule of, But the rule yeah. book, yeah. The word yeah. of the rule, it's it's he's correct, and, and that's the correct call. So, but even with Calvin Johnson, Calvin Johnson clearly caught that ball, had control of the ball, and slammed the ball down and came up off of it because he had control of the ball when he came down. And he felt as though he finished the play. Yeah. And that was why they had to even try to interpret the rule the way that they did. I think they just have to look at what – I mean, we're looking at guys like Odell Beckham and yeah. the way they're catching the balls these days. That It's not – the game is evolving. So you can't, you can't look at it the way that you once did because these guys are doing different things Absolutely. than what guys have, have done in the past. So, so my question is, take a look at that, that is that rule. is that particular rule flawed then in that case, yes. this yeah. day and age? Yeah. 100%. Oh, yeah. Okay, so then my uh, the, I guess the next thing is how do you overturn or how do you revise, modify the uh, the rule in order to? Oh, that's going to have to come through the competition committee. They're going to have to sit down and they'll, they'll I guarantee you that will be a play up for review. Mm-hmm. Uh, this coming off season, they'll they'll take a look at that. Yeah, yeah, now, absolutely. Whether they change it, I don't know, but you don't want to. They they've adjusted a lot of things about the game that have to do with safety. You don't want to adjust something obviously that is going to take away from the offensive uh, production of a game, and that mm-hmm. clearly altered the game in some some shape or form. Yeah. by calling it back. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. It, changed, it definitely changed the game. It changed the, the momentum. The Cowboys would have yeah. had first and goal with the one yard that yeah. game if it weren't for that call. Not I don't to know say about winning, okay, but, yeah. but not to say yeah. that they didn't have plenty of chances to you know win right? without that call. Well, we like said, I said yeah. last week yeah. too, it doesn't come the down Lions to one play. Plenty no. of chances, yeah. too, but yeah. that was a crucial call, and, and it totally changed the momentum. Absolutely. Of the game. Yeah, absolutely. And even Jason Garrett said in his post game interview, you know, we had multiple chance, we had other chances. Yeah. You know, it wasn't just that call. So they did. They they had it. And as much as I don't really like the Cowboys, um, <laughs> oh. I don't really like Jerry Jones, Tony Romo, but I, I I respect Des Bryant and Demarco Murray. I think they're amazing players. And I think that that team didn't you pick them? With me, I did. I picked oh, okay. them, so yeah. I, I went one for f- one and three this week. But um, okay. that team as a whole was, I think, the only team playing lights out on every aspect of the game. Their oh, yeah. offensive line, their defense, their all their receivers. They had a their complete team. Game. They, they played. They were playing so well. They deserve. They were the better team. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. In that game, yes. absolutely. You could clearly see that Dallas was better than Green Bay for a long time oh, yeah. in that game, but. Yeah. But that doesn't necessarily it, – it's, it's kind of like you got to think about uh, – you ever see the movie The 13th Warrior? And the guy picks a fight with the biggest, strongest guy in the village because they need to, to, to prove a point. Well, he's a little guy. He goes, he fights the big guy. Well, the big guy is beating the heck out of him. He's breaking his shields. It's like he's keep going. And they want to stop the fight because they're thinking that this big guy is going to kill him. You know, he keeps going back, boom, boom, goes back in, he's fighting a big guy, big guy breaks another shield. He gets down to his last shield. They go back out, he breaks the shield. Now he's sitting there, he's tired. He looks like he's beat down, beat beat to the point of where, okay, I can't I can't defend myself anymore. He's on his knees. He's 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 
looks like he's defeated and the guy gets ready to go chop his head off and he turns and he sticks him. He sticks him quick, sticks him real in the right place and puts the big guy down and basically says to, to the whole village watching, you know, he, he, was, he was a brave man. So the whole point is sometimes, sometimes you can watch a beating take place and it doesn't necessarily show who the better who what the better fighter or what the better team was because it's all about how you finish. Yep. And 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 quite frankly, the better team finished the game. Whether people want to use that call as as the catalyst or what have you, there was still time in the game for them to be able to stop Green Bay and get the ball back and do what they needed to do. They couldn't get the offense off of the field and they were able to close the game out. So it's not about them looking better or being better than Green Bay for most of the game. It was about they were possibly better than them during the course of the game, but were not better than them as a team, and that's why they lost. Yeah, that's true. That's and, I mean, it shouldn't it. have been even that close. I mean, Rodgers was playing hurt. He was literally limping out there in between certain plays. And, you know, the fact that they still cannot slow him down um, – is also I I think just a a testament and we goes back to winners how we were talking about earlier Brady that. and that I think that just goes back to winner. Rogers is a winner he yeah. is a winner but a gracious that winner that and won't work this if week. he happens to meet Brady in the Super Bowl if that happens that, to happen that won't happen I, I will put it on Rogers any I know that they, they have to leg, get past Seattle that, I know but still if he had both legs. Maybe, but one, <laughs> one, one and a half, I, I just can't see. <laughs> he said it right. and a half. Yeah, yeah, one and a half. You know what's interesting? You guys probably, real quick, talked about this this morning as well, that it was the same ref that called the Des the Bryant and Johnson. the Calvin Johnson yeah. thing in yeah. the yeah. reverse, yeah. which they I did. thought yeah. was like, hmm. Huh. Yeah. 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 No, they did talk about that. Um, we are short on time, so I want to get over to the yeah. last game, which was yes. Denver, Indianapolis. Uh, we talked a lot about Peyton Manning already, so you know we won't touch on that anymore. But he was playing with one leg too. Yes, he has been injured. What I heard today He's on old. the aftermath, which is another show on NFL Network, plug in NFL Network. Shouts out to Rhett. Rhett, yeah, Rhett, uh, one of our hosts was talking, was on that show talking about how uh, he was interviewing Judy Batista, who spoke to somebody in the Broncos um, organization who said that. John Elway has to have a serious conversation with Peyton Manning and decide whether or not that injury a was... A $19 million exactly. conversation. Whether or not that injury was the sole reason for his play decline yeah. uh, after the first nine games of the season when he was playing really well. Was it just because of that injury? and was Or was it because of the injury and a combination of John Fox's calls? Because they were saying that that was an issue as well. And do they think that Peyton can come back and recover and be at 100% again next season. That's the whole issue, whether or not he will return. Is, is I, I've said this before and I'm gonna say it again. Peyton Manning at 60% is still better than over half, the over better than over three quarters of the quarterbacks in the NFL. Him at 55% is. So uh, to go back to your question, yes, we're used to seeing Peyton obviously just Annihilate. I mean, if you saw his season last year, we're used to seeing that kind of Peyton. So the moment he has an off Peyton like game where he could still be good, he could, I think he still threw for over what, 250, 300 yards the last game. But, you know, all of a sudden the conversation is what's wrong with you, Peyton? Because we're so used to seeing him excel at, um, you know, these astronomical levels. Now, also keep in mind, he didn't have Julian Thomas for, for uh, um, the tight end for a while. And that was one of his go-to targets a lot this year. I think he was actually leading the team in reset um, and touchdowns until he was injured. And uh, uh, Wes it Welker was matter wasn't... though because Emmanuel Sanders and Demarius Thomas were picking up any slack that could have been well, left the, off by having Julius Thomas injured. But still, I mean, you still the need all Broncos the pieces. Broncos looked here. very bad yeah, in this did. game. I, 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 and I, I think the storyline more is about their defense than it was about their offense. I mean, their offense wasn't wasn't up to snuff the way that they should have been, and obviously it comes out that. Peyton Manning has been injured, yeah. but you you went out you you built your defense for this game, right? Exactly. You built you built that defensive front for this game. Stop the run inside. You got Pot Rose and those guys on the inside. Then you bring in Demarcus Ware and you have Von Miller on the other side. They didn't sniff. They didn't sniff Andrew Luck. Yeah. The pass rush was was <laughs> anemic at best. During the course of that game, yeah. to me, 
that's that's the bigger bigger concern if if I'm looking at this team because if if I if I'm looking at Peyton Manning, I feel as though Peyton Manning can find a way to to heal his his ails whatever his whatever is ailing him, he's going to be able to, his to figure it out. He's yeah. going to be able to figure it out. But your defense let you down in that game, and that's to me that was the biggest tell of the tape in that game. I agree. Yeah. And then on the other side of the ball, the Colts defense. They've I mean, been playing lights out. They played yeah. so yeah. well, yeah. and and play. I've said. I've said in you know past episodes that I felt like the Colts defense was kind of soft, but they came out and they started completely off. shut me up. They mm-hmm. ran for over 200 <laughs> yards. Uh, the New England Patriots did the first time around with, with Jonas, what Jonas Gray, yeah. which is interesting because now they are going to meet again under different circumstances and with a defense that's playing with a whole lot more um, umph we'll yeah. say, than, than what they did the first time around. So it'll be interesting to see if they really are as good as they've been playing or it just was a matter of the opponent that right, they were the matchup, against. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, speaking of that matchup next week, let's get into predictions. Oh, yeah. Phil? Predictions? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or somebody else in there. And now they switched. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk. Bus. So that the first matchup we'll talk about here, the Colts and Patriots. Um, Steph, who are you going to take? I'm going to take the Colts. I know. I, I shouldn't have I even asked. Andrew Luck. The it's Brady not, hater. It's not because yeah. I'm a Jets fan. I just think I just I'm a big Andrew Luck fan. I think the Colts are on. I think they're on. I think they're going to win. Kevin. Uh, you know, I, I'm going to kind of piggyback off what you said. Um, I mean, really, I think that Coach Broncos game was the passing of the torch from Peyton to Andrew Luck, who is going to be the future. Of How, football. However. It, it, even though he's the future, the time is now, and I think Tom Brady has the hot hand now, and that boy's going to deliver. So I'm going to go with the Patriots. Lamar? The matchup says you have to look at the Patriots as the favorite in this game. Why? Because it's in Foxborough. It's at home. They play very well at home. You're looking at the coaches. I like Pagano, but he's no Bill Belichick. Bill yeah. Belichick may be the greatest football coach in, in uh, the National Football League of all time. Well, Pagano uh, doesn't cheat. Well, that, that's okay. <laughs> Carlo, just... Carlo, those, those wins still count. <laughs> uh, when, I, when I look at the matchup of this game, I think they're going to have a very – DeQuell Jackson and, and, and those guys are going to have a very difficult time, or whoever it is they try to figure out – Either a linebacker is going to be too slow or a cornerback or a defensive back is going to be too small with with Gronkowski. I think that's going to be a matchup to look at. LaFell has has stretched the field out and done what he's needed to do. And then you have the two peewees out there doing what they're doing with Amendola and, and uh, 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 what's his face? Uh, Edelman. 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 Those, yeah. those guys are playing real the well. Peewees. I, I, I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be very, very difficult. For even with the amount of weapons and talent that they have with Knicks and and Ty and even at uh, Fleener and those guys, it's, it's still even Boom Herring has done well running the ball. But yeah. I just think that that's a very very daunting task for for this Colts team to be able to go into Foxborough and win. So I have conventional wisdom would say you got to go with the Patriots. I agree. I as much as I would like to ch- take the Colts in this matchup because I do like Andrew Luck. I um, think he's an excellent quarterback, and I, I like that team. But like LeVar said, it is a very daunting task to try to take on Tom Brady and the Pats in Foxborough, in Foxborough when they're, they've got the momentum, they're on fire. They, It's going to be difficult. I'm going to take the Patriots. That's okay. I was the only one that took the Colts last week. It's That's Broncos true. and everyone kind of said That's true. Things. So we'll speaking of records happens. from last week, didn't I actually? I like how we skipped over yeah, that part no, this week. Yeah, we don't I, have to I, skip over it. I actually picked the Colts to win. There actually. you go. Huh? I think my only my only loss. I picked Seattle to win. Um, Did you pick Dallas? I think I picked Dallas. Oh, yeah. I think I picked Dallas to win because of Aaron Rodgers' leg. We don't so have I to skip over it, Kevin. I think that was my we can, only. If we have time, first, it doesn't matter. This was the first time ever all season that you actually had a <laughs> winning record. 500. Yeah, so congrats, congrats. It doesn't matter. I'm still crushing all of you guys. 
in the final you standings see, here. You see the, how I'm a gracious winner? I you know? That. No. Real gra gracious winner. Mm. She's know. the Tom Brady of the bunch. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. I'm a winner. It's all about it. Is. And I have I'm a hot wife, it. apparently. GB. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. GB. Okay, so let's talk about the other matchup. Packers at Seahawks. Steph. Take the Packers. <sighs> Go out on a limb. Go ahead. No, I, I, I kind of think the Seahawks are going to win. I kind of want the Packers to win, though. But I feel like it's also so too... That's that's, to that's called towing the line right there. Yeah. That's your straddle, right? You straddled the no, fence. No, I'm taking the Seahawks. <gasps> I oh. usually pick with my heart. The Buckeyes just defeated Holy the. Um, sorry, you guys. We just got breaking news. The Buckeyes just defeated Oregon the favored Ducks. Oregon Ducks, what, 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 what? forty-two to twenty, in the national championship 42 game. Forty-two wow. to twenty. 40 to, that boy Cardell Jones. I'm sorry, we're way off topic. His sorry. third star ever. Okay. And his third stream. Yeah. And way I, to go. I, what but I feel back like to Don't NFL. stop believing. Back to like NFL. I said. Real quick. It's just. It's kind of funny how it's like the the vet quarterbacks versus kind of like the new quarterbacks. So we'll see. I think it'll be interesting. Mm. Kevin? Now, conventional wisdom will tell you oh, that the Seahawks see how he does are going to win. Because he's in, inspirational. I'm going to start saying XP every time I say a knowledge thing. There you go. So anyways. Um, I don't know if you want it, that in his knowledge. Right. Whatever. Right. whatever. Right. They, they beat up on me. Sometimes I deserve it, though. Hey, man, All right. A lot of times I deserve it. Fun. But anyways. Um, anyways. Uh, I. I I'm gonna go with the Packers, and the reason I'm gonna say that is because, well, I'm a Niners fan, and Seahawks are a division rival, so there's a little bit of bias in there. But I will say this much: I will say that Aaron Rodgers, I believe, when the game is on the line, he's proved he proved that last game that he's. I know he's banged up, but he has a week to kind of rehabilitate his calf. And um, I think that the secondary to Legion of Boom, I think that Jordy Nelson is going to have a hell of a game against them. I think he's going to expose them, especially. But can I just make a point? Last time they played them, Richard know, Sherman was I, on Jordy Nelson. And, and he, he didn't did throw it. And I know he didn't throw it. He didn't test him at all. That was the first game of the season, that Thursday night game. We all know what happened when they played the first game of the season. And I know they didn't go after okay, Richard so you're Sherman. Choosing the Packers. Yeah. But. No Moss. Yeah. No Moss. <laughs> no Moss is synonymous with. Seattle. Oh man. No Moss. Yeah, no Moss. I um come on, Tina. Rock no, with your boy. Rock with your boy. I, I, I told you I think that the Packers defense is not as good as a lot of other defenses. I think there's a lot of holes there and therefore I'm taking the Seahawks because I think they're just a better team and they're at home. And I'm still gonna take the Colts for winning the Super Bowl. I think I've said that like four weeks. Now. I think All I'm right. gonna take your microphone for that well, one right there. <laughs> take her cup. Lavar, <laughs> thank you so much I for joining us. Appreciate you guys us. having me on. Yeah, Lavar, yeah. man, thanks for coming on, yes. man. We really, really appreciate it. Tell everyone where they can find you on Instagram, Twitter, yeah. your website, all that stuff. Just at Lavar Arrington, L-A-V-A-R-A-R-R-I-N-G-T-O-N. Simple, plain. Just hit me up. And is it extremeprecision.com? Extreme, X with an X, no E, and then pro with an O. If you're extremely precise, then you can be an extreme pro at what you do. So extreme precision. Play on words. There you go. Love the Guys. philosophy. Pooyah. I'm, I'm Kevin John. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at HeyKevinJohn. Bam. You guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram. I am Steph Z. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Tina Cap. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Next week, we will have our divisional. We'll find out actually who's in the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. And we can talk about it. It'll be real exciting. Packers and Patriots. We'll All see. Right, I'm out of here. We will <laughs> see. <laughs> From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later! later. Buzz. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal.